crosshairs are also very thin. I mean, the, the thick duplex reticle is fine when you're up close, because you don't need the fine hairs. But when you try to go to something that's further away, and you need those crosshairs, Okay, we're shooting 200 yards with 22 long rifle. We're using the Federal uh, Auto Match. Um, so here we are in 5X. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, since I have a 22 conversion bolt in here, I'm going to dial up three mils. Okay, so what the three mils does is it compensates for the 22 long rifle having a lower point of impact okay so right now basically i have a 50 yard zero um with the um you know on the 22 long rifle by dialing up three mils okay um I mean, it might be something i think it's actually something like three and a quarter or something but uh just to simplify i go to three okay uh next thing i want to do is i want to set my well, let's dial in a little bit let's dial in so we're at 200 yards Actually, that's 10 right there. We're gonna have to adjust the parallax. So, so that's now this. That, as you can see, once you as you dial in, it gets a little bit blurry. So that's one of the things that you don't have to worry about with LPVOs. Uh, with LPVOs, you don't have to adjust adjust for parallax. Once you, um, once you, you know, um, get your diopter right in the back, usually it's it's good for everything else. Here, I lost it. I got dialed down a little bit. Get thing right, here. right there it is so let's stay on it all right so yeah it looks like the, the, the parallax is it's about perfect right there okay so yeah we can see the bullet hits on the steel okay so um so here's the thing uh my so what with this thing dialed up to you know with a 50 yard zero right which is what i have now my point of aim uh, or, or rather, the bull drop that I have to use with the 22 long rifle uh, is six mils from here. So the problem with the first focal plane scope is that you can barely tell where the six mils is, uh, because as you zoom in with the first focal plane scope, it kind of falls out of your vision. Right, so we can we can kind of see it at the bottom, but we don't have the benefit of that number okay so we kind of have to go from the four five six we have to dial down rather we have to oh, I lost it where are you there it is so normally like right now i'm at 10x let's take a couple of shots at 10x uh using the six the problem is now i don't know where six is because the numbers are too small for me to read <laughs> so let's go back okay so now i can see the there we go so now i can see the four and the six okay so wh what's my magnification then? i'm just curious 15 right there i'm at 15. so at 15 i can see the six okay and that should be my four. I had to go get uh, electronic earmuffs because I couldn't hear the steel ringing. Okay, so right now we're at, um, we say we were at 15 magnification and our hold, because we, ha we have a three mil dial up to compensate for the 22 long rifle. Um, and, uh, oh shit, I lost it. I dialed back so I can find it. There it is. All right, and we're basically the drop should be six mils, which is kind of hard to see those numbers on the side all right but that should be right about there Let's see if we can hear a ping uh, i saw an impact it was low all right let's do this uh let's dial up to 25. all right gotta change the parallax yeah these lpvos are very lpv i mean um it's not LPV. Scopes that have parallax adjustments, I mean, they really force you to use that parallax adjustment. So now, when I'm dialed in at 25, I can I, I can barely see the six at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dial up 
uh, to nine. Okay, because I basically I need to go another six mils up. So we're gonna dial up to nine. Okay, because it's proving to be the easier, faster, easier and faster thing to do here. Well, I gotta dial back so I can find my. Yeah, see, there's two, there's two targets. There's one there and one there, and I keep getting confused between the two. That's why you got to dial back. So that's the thing with the, when you got, like, 25 power magnification, you're constantly, like, going back and forth. Um, so let's hold right there in the center. I think it might be a little bit low. Let's go a little bit higher. There you go. That's a hit. Uh, so, you know, let's uh, go up to 10. I mean, the last time I checked this, it was a lot warmer. So now with the colder weather uh, on these 22s, it uh, looks like they're going a little bit slower. So I'm getting a little bit more of a drop. Yeah, I'll dial back. Yeah, it's my target. All right, so right now I'm up 10 mils. Hit. Go more towards the top. Go bottom. Hit. Okay. So I think the 10 might have been too much. Let's go dial it back. We'll go 9.5. Oh, lost it. Dial back. There it is. Dial up. Hit. See what the wind's doing. Stall back and see if we can see the whip ribbons. No, it doesn't look like we have any wind. Stall up. Okay. Oh, let's go hold center. Let's hold a little bit more towards the top. Hit. All right, let's go to the bottom. See if we can get a hit near the bottom. Hit. Okay. So that's just a 20, because we, we got to hit at the top, we got to hit at the bottom. So, and there's no significant, significant wind that I can see. So when we get misses, it's just basically the 22 is just, just, uh, you know, spiraling out, you know, spiraling out a little bit. Oh, I saw the impact, that was a little high. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, see so here's the thing, we're, we're shooting 200 yards right now with 22 long rifle. And you know, the great thing about, oh, I lost my position, I gotta go back. The great thing about 20, you know, having a 22 conversion bolt is it allows you to really like test out your scope on a 200 yard range and you can do the stuff that like you would normally be doing at, like if this was 5.56, five, in order for me to be dialed up to 10 mils, I'd, be ha I'd have to be shooting like 800 yards. Hit. Hit. Still back just a little bit. See what. See if we do that. See when you dial back, it's like right now I I can't see the lines. It's like I'm trying to guess where they are. Right. So right now I'm at uh, at 15 magnification. See in the snow I can see the lines. Right. You can see the lines, but when I go up to the dark target, it's like I don't know where the center is. I'm just kind of guessing now. On the dark target. See, I don't know what a cro what, what those crosshairs meet. Right, see, I gotta dial up. This way I can see the chevron. Come on. Okay. Way out, it's like, okay. Now I'm at 5x, it's like... It's like, if I'm in the snow, yeah, you can kind of see where those thin lines meet, but... But when you're on the dark target, where the hell do they meet? I, th I think it's there. Oh, hold on. Back here. So, I, so yeah, in the snow I can see where the lines meet, but not up there. 
Oh, Ivex, I got a hit. Yeah, I don't know what it's on. Let's zoom up a little bit. All right. So there I got a better sense. Can't perfectly see the center. But... No, let's zoom up even more. All right, so that's the primary arms. 5 to 25 by 56. So, yeah. A little fun now. Uh, we're in 5X, and we're going to do some target to target transitions. I have to come down off the targets between my shots in order to find the targets. The reason is because of the 5X, because otherwise I'm fishing around for it. It's hard to tell with the, with the thin lines. Okay, in case you guys haven't figured it out by now, I've got a binary trigger on this rifle. Okay, so not a problem in seeking difference with those thick uh, crosshairs, but when I go out, let's say to 50 yards right there. Yeah, I got one hit out of all that. That's because it, as the gun's moving around, it's, 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 it's hard to find where those thin crosshairs meet. I mean, it's all great when you zoom in, right? Because when you zoom in, you can see those lines. But when you zoom that 5x and you're moving around and the dark target's a little dark, uh, it's a little hard to see the cross. That's why the horseshoe is like better for CQB type of this, you know, shooting. You know, this is like a dedicated uh, distance scope. Hey, I just remembered that this thing has illumination and. I figured let's try it out. See, yeah, with illumination, you can see a lot better in, in the dark areas. Let's go into a single shot. Go into single shot mode at 100 yards. Oh, low. Yeah, actually, oh, I got to dial up to three. Hold on, let me dial up to three. Three mils up. There you go. So the, the problem with the illumination is that it just eats up the battery. Um, I generally tell people just train without the illumination because you can't be dependent on it. But yeah, that's what it looks like with the illumination on versus off. Yeah, it really helps in the dark areas when you're in 5X. Especially if you're moving around. But yeah, again, the problem is that until they come up with like solar powered or a fiber optic or something that, um, you know, is uh, not dependent on the battery, it's really not practical having the illumination because it's just going to eat through the battery. And you might as well just get used to not having it and just working with the, with the etched reticle. So that's my mindset with this. Well, I thought I'd show you guys what we were shooting. Okay, so that's the primary arms 
uh, 5 to 25 by 56, okay? And uh, uh, you can see over here we got the uh, 22 conversion bolt in there, okay? And uh, so this has a 50-yard zero with 556. Five, so what I do is um, when I'm putting the 22 conversion bolt, what I do is I dial up to 3 mils. So that gives me a 50-yard zero with 22 long rifle. It's just that you got to remember when you're done, you got to dial the spec down uh, to your zero stop, right? Because I have a zero stop. I have this thing set with the zero stop. I did a separate video on that. Because if you don't and you put in like, a, you shoot 5.56 five, and this thing is like three mils up, all right, you're going to you're gonna send those bolts really high, you know, like maybe even over your backstop. So you always got to remember to dial back down to your zero as your starting point, okay? Um, so one of the things I am finding is that uh, you know, because basically prior to this, I've done a lot of work with the, um, um, a lot of work with the uh, uh, LPBOs that don't have parallax. So once you set the diopter in the back, you're pretty much done. With this, it's a constant, you know, that's your parallax adjustment here. It's a constant back and forth. So especially if you're going to be like doing a lot of moving and shooting, you kind of have to pick a parallax setting that's going to kind of like be in the middle. So usually like 50 yard parallax will probably is probably a good place to be, you know, and then if you go further than that, you basically just you dial it up and then remember to dial it back down. So if you haven't, if, you, if you're not used to working with these type of scopes that have the large bells in the front, because I think that's that's I think what necessitates having the parallax. Once you go to a once you go to a large objective lens in the front, you have to have the parallax. I did a separate video on this. Uh, on the LPVOs, like if like your parallax, like let's say once you have it set, when you move your head side to side, the most that you're going to be off is like maybe one inch at 100 yards, right? If, so if you move your head side to side. With this, it's the same deal. Even when you're in parallax, even when your parallax is perfect, if you move your head, your eye back and forth over here, you're still going to be off one inch out of 100 yards, okay? So you still have to be centered even after you set your parallax. If you're a little off like this, you can be off to one, off up to one inch. Now, what happened is if your parallax is off here, right? And now you're moving your head back and forth here. Now you can be off three to four inches at 100 yards, okay? So if you have a scope with a large objective lens and you're using and it has a parallax, you have to have your parallax correct uh, because otherwise you can be way off, okay? Um, so yeah, one of the things I like about this scope is I, I love this throw, throw lever. They kind of figured out the right height. This is a good height for a throw lever to be at. Because any bigger than that, it can snag on things. Any shorter than this, um, and it, it, it tends to be too short to be able to manipulate and, and grab. So this is a good height. And, and this is the height that, like, usually I can tell uh, which are, like, their older scopes and which are the newer ones based, uh, like, when I look at a picture of them, based on this... Um, on the throw lever, right? Because it, because this is like all their recent scopes have this size throw level, throw lever. So that tells me if it's a newer scope or if it's like an older version that they're usually discounting and trying to you know sell off cheaper. Um, the, uh, the 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 mount here is the Discovery. Uh, it is a it is a um, uh, what is it? What, what MOA mount is? It is a 20 MOA mount. Okay. Um, and I did a separate video on this. Basically, what that does is it gives you four additional mils of elevation. That's it. it you know, I, I, I was hoping it would be more, but yeah, it's only this the 20 MOA mount only gives you four additional uh, mils of elevation. I think that I would be better off with a with, with either a 25 or a 30. I've got 30 mils of travel on this top turret, so I've 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 calculated that I can actually use a 30 MOA mount. And that would put me like near the bottom, but not all the way at the bottom. I would still have, uh, I would get a 50 yard zero and still have three mils below that, okay, as, as a uh, margin of error, okay. Uh, so that's what I really need. But I don't, I, and they do have them, but I didn't want to spend like $250. Uh, this one that I have here from Discovery Opt, I think this was like a $35 mount. It works just fine, okay. Um, so yeah, that, 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 that works just fine. So the, uh, uh, the upper here is from Palmetto. It's uh, I've, I've hit one inch groups with this at 100 yards. Um, I have. I don't think I've shot th this one with a match ammo. If I shot it with match ammo, I'm pretty sure we get that down to about half an inch. 
Um, the lower is an aerial precision. It's kind of weird that I have a Lone Star lower because I don't live in Texas. But it's a weird. It's, it's a strange story how I came about this. Um, it was back in 2020 when everything was like you know uh, I, I was everybody was like rushing to put together guns and stuff like that. And uh, you know basically that's how I ended up with this Lone Star. It's pretty cool. I like it. I like the fact that if you put in a um, a, a, a like a Lancer clear magazine with some brass, you can actually see uh, the ammo through that little hole. I, I think that it would be like ideal to have like almost like a whole like I, they should have like cut out the whole state here so that you could really see in there. So if you put like a clear mag in there, you can you can see all your rounds that are, as they're feeding. Um, that I, I think that would be ideal for a uh, for you know because because you can afford to lose some metal over here. Um, and you know, it would, you wouldn't lose too much strength. But anyway, so this is an aerial precision lower. Um, I forget what grip that is. Uh, it came, it came with it. You know, this, this grip came with it. I, I think it might be a Daniel defense. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, the grip. Not that, you know, like I said, it just came with it. So I, so I took it. Um, it was a stripped lower that I built out. And then I put the Franklin Armory trigger in it. So that's just safe. That's your single shot, and that's your happy mode right there. So that's cool. I like how how that goes around all the way. So safe, safe single shot, and then happy modes. And it's actually it, you can see it's ambidextrous because that's the right side. So that's the left side. This has a longer one. Um, the one thing I don't like is they should have made it because see how this has a screw over here. Um, like this, these do come loose. So ideally, you want your ambi levers to be like solid. Like you want a two-piece design, not three-piece design. You want this side to be solid without a screw because if this, both of these screws happen to shake loose, you're not going to have a leather lever on each side. But anyway, that's this. This is supplied by Franklin Armory. You have to use their safety lever. Uh, if you don't use their safety lever, it's the, the trigger is not going to work. Uh, but anyway, that's that's the scope. I want to show you guys the scope. We're going to do a full-blown review on this at some point. Uh, you know, basically, I've been working on this. I've done lots of videos already on this. You know, I, I know a lot of people out there, they do like a one, whatever, 30 or 40-minute review. I mean, you know, I, I just do all my reviews, like, kind of piecemeal, you know. I focus on one thing at a time. Uh, after a couple of months of working with the scope, then at some point, I'll do like a, a you know, a, a summary review. All right, so those are the, C because that's a CMMG conversion bolt in there. And these are the CMMG mags. Um, this, that's the um, the Sea Life uh, Sea Life uh, bipod. It works pretty good. It's, uh, work. I did a separate review on this. This is working pretty good for me. And that's the ammo we're using. The Federal Auto Match works pretty good with the with the binary trigger. Hey everyone, uh, I wanted to add one more thing. Um, that scope is heavy. It, that's uh, two and a half pounds, including the mount on top of that AR, okay? So as a matter of practicality, uh, a lot of times you're gonna end up carrying the scope like this. <laughs> That's how you're gonna end up carrying the rifle. Uh, it's just a natural carrying handle, okay? So I don't know if I'm the only one that does it, uh, but that's a lot of times when I pick it up, that's where my hand goes, right? This is just like a, a natural grabbing point right there. Uh, so, you know, so this rifle does end up being very top heavy. So a lot of times, like if, you, if I'm holding the rifle, like it wants to roll over. So this is a very, this is obviously a specialized scope. Okay, this, this is for a very specialized roll uh, of, of distance shooting. Okay.